Does anyone really outgrow cartoons? I mean, if people like that do exist, they sure don't sound like people we'd want to hang out with. These days, they make cartoons for adults that are so racy that parents send their children to bed before they come on. What's happening? I'm your host, The Notorious Nick, and today we're talking about some of our favorite dirty jokes from the classic cartoons. The production code of 1930 was Hollywood's effort to voluntarily self-regulate in order to avoid government censorship. But sometimes those very talented cartoonists just couldn't help themselves and snuck in some jokes for mom and dad that flew right over little Junior's head. But now we're all old enough to get the jokes. So come on and let's take another look. Before we start, be sure to hit that thumbs up button for us and subscribe to the channel so you never miss an episode. We are the chorus. We hope you like our show. We know you're rooting for us. But now it's time for us to see Flipping the bird to the censors. Give me the bird! If the Hayes office would only let me, I'd give him the point, all right. The Hayes office was the common name for the motion picture producers and distributors of America. They developed the production code to clean up the film industry's image. Before the code, there was the anything goes attitude in the film industry, and cartoons were no different. A few dirty words. To protect their homes, the beavers dam the river. A few vintage cartoons actually feature characters saying words like damn and hell when they get angry or frustrated, which maybe raised an eyebrow or two. Some also even include a little brief cartoon nudity. But after the production code, the writers had to resort to clever wordplay and double entendres. <laughs> Speaking of cunning linguists, Yosemite Sam had the rootinest, tootinest, shootinest ability to turn everyday broadcast safe words into some of the foulest swear words ever. One of our all-time favorites was a special treat from Warner Brothers when Porky Pig made an appearance on a 1934 blooper reel. Son of a bit, a gun. <laughs> you thought I was gonna say as this son of a bitch, didn't you? <laughs> The Censored Eleven. Opinions vary about how much progress we've made as a society, but many studios have acknowledged that some of their old cartoons featured some pretty outdated and culturally insensitive humor. Warner Brothers famously pulled Eleven Mary Melodies cartoons from broadcast in 1968 because they unfavorably depicted ethnic stereotypes and were unsuitable for broadcast audiences. These cartoons are collectively known as the Censored Eleven. Some critics have defended two of Bob Clampett's cartoons from the Eleven, Coal Black and De Seven Dwarfs, and Tin Pan Alley Cats. Clampett was a big fan of the LA jazz scene in the 1940s, and according to interviews, his characters were merely caricatures of the performers at the club. He said, that he was once approached by an African-American theatrical troupe who wanted to know why there were no black characters in Warner Brothers cartoons. And he didn't have an answer. When Ted Turner acquired the rights to the censored 11, he announced that he did not intend to broadcast them or release them on video. And when volume four of the Looney Tunes Golden Collection was released, those 11 shorts were not included, but it did feature some other cartoons from the era featuring similarly controversial material. Speedy Gonzalez, friend of my sister. Speedy Gonzalez, friend of everybody's sister. Warner Home Video included a disclaimer acknowledging that some of the content is considered offensive, but quote, editing out the racist depictions and therefore effectively denying that the racism of the era ever happened is worse than actually showing them. A few shorts are now in the public domain and can usually be found on the almighty internet. View them at your own peril. Bugs Bunny's gender fluidity. We team you up with a hot female co-star. Usually, I play the female love interest. With so much talk about gender fluidity in the news and on social media these days, we suspect our old pal Bugs Bunny would consider the discussion old hat. You naughty, naughty boy. Bugs even got his old arch enemy Elmer Fudd involved sometimes. But all's well that ends well for our favorite duo after Wabbit season ends. I think it always helps a picture to have a romantic ending. 
Speaking of rabbits, while we're on the subject. 460,000, I think. I mean, <laughs> I am just a dumb bunny, but we are good at multiplying. The rapid procreation of our lovable bunny friends has worked itself into a long running gag in a lot of children's cartoons. We can only imagine some of the creative answers that mom and dad had to come up with on the fly when the kiddos asked them to explain the joke. Why are you laughing, mom? Uh, let's play another one. Going to the dogs. Many of us never understood why mom and dad freaked out so much when our family pet dragged his butt around the living room carpet. But the cartoonist made it up to them a little bit by sneaking in a bit of innuendo. Hey, I better cut this out. I may get to like it. <laughs> dogs have a lot of great qualities, but manners isn't one of them. I don't suppose that this vintage scene with Minnie Mouse seems like much more than old fashioned slapstick to most kids, but our fully formed and fully corrupted minds are a little dirtier than that. Okay, a lot dirtier than that. Now, Goofy wasn't known for being the sharpest knife in the drawer, but we wonder if any unfaithful parents found this milk delivery a bit crazy. Cringeworthy. Friendly, cuz. Getting high. Okay, we jokes are a little passe. Or should we say puff puff passe? But now that it's becoming legal in so many new places, it's definitely an activity for adults. But that never stopped writers from rolling in plenty of pot humor anyway. We assume the parents just told the kids it was tobacco. But now I really don't see how that's any better. Penis humor. Ah, penis humor. As old as the penis, also known as tallywhacker, schlong. And a common part of playground humor, stand-up comedy, and motion pictures. Well, we'll just tell your mother that, uh, that uh, we ate it all. And it should come as no surprise that they also frequently show up in cartoons. In the 1990s, medical researchers accidentally discovered that their new heart medicine suddenly made old men hotter than Phoenix in July. But they might not be the first ones to have that idea. Freud would probably be the first to say that sometimes a cannon isn't just a cannon. Hubba hubba! Betty Boop was one of the cartoon world's earliest femme fatales. She was inspired by the flappers of the Roaring Twenties and irresistible to all of the men she encountered. She also wasn't afraid to stick up for herself if someone got fresh, no matter how big they were. After the production code went into effect, they toned down some of Betty's antics, but she's still as popular as ever and even a bit of a role model for women who aspire to be both sexy and spunky. Exotic dance has been a major staple of old cartoons. Amorous leading characters frequently ogled young starlets that were so sexy that they literally made men's hats fly off and their eyeballs pop out of their head. <laughs> Gorgeous. Even members of the animal kingdom got in on the act. All these sexy strip teases in old cartoons seem to explain where the writers spent their spare time. But it also begs the question of whether or not they were intended simply as an inside joke for dad or something a bit more sinister. Perhaps the old burlesque promoters wined and dined the writers in an effort to drum up new business for the years ahead. You gotta hook them while they're young. And since we're on the subject, I for one have always wondered how Popeye got those big beefy forearms. We might just have an idea. I'm Donald Duck and I'm here to party. Old Donald Duck has been quacking us all up for years. And our clever friends at Disney love to cover up his foul language with quacks. Poor old Donald's problems never seem to roll off like water from a duck's back. And his frustration has been a constant source of amusement for all of us. He needs some R&R. &R. And what better place to find it than at the local peep show? As we see Donald climb all over the machine and fall off his stool just when they get to the good part. Those of us with older sisters might suddenly remember all those times when their friends slept over. So we'll be the first to admit that we're never outgrowing cartoons. They're kind of like breasts, intended for kids, but dads enjoy them too. Being a parent means making sacrifices for our kids. Luckily, the studios have always been great at slipping in a few things that we can chuckle at whenever our kids take over the TV, which is about all the time. 
So keep them coming, writers. So let's discuss. Did we leave out your favorite dirty cartoon joke? Do you have a great story about explaining one of these jokes to your kids? Please let us know in the comments. We read every single one. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for us and subscribe to the channel so you never miss out on what happened. That's all, folks. That's all, folks.